Matthew chapter 1. Amen. The birth of Christ was on this wise. Verse 18. Amen. When it was his mother Mary, spouse to Joseph, before they came together, that's a big thing. Amen. Amen. Uh, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, amen, was mindful to put her away privily. Listen, a troubling time right there. Imagine what Joseph was thinking about and what everybody else was thinking about. <laughs> everybody else thinking this girl's a fornicator. She's a whore. Played whoredom in Israel. You'd kill her. But he loved her. He didn't want to. He didn't want to see her have to face all that shame. So he's thinking, you know, I can just slip away from this thing, put her off privately. Amen. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, take unto thee Mary thy wife. Amen. For that which conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. He said, I want you to wear a black eye for me. I want you to bear reproach. Amen. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Amen. He come to give us a brand new life. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord bidden him. He's obedient. And took, took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. He obeyed God. He did what God told him to do. Joseph was a good guy. You want to pat in your life after somebody, Joseph would be a good fellow to do it. Amen. Yeah. Mary would be a good lady to follow. I got a sermon outline book at the house, and I was trying to prepare a sermon about this. A guy's got a sermon in there called The Stable Family. <laughs> There's a lot of ways you can go with that, The Stable Family. Joseph was a stable man. Mary was a stable woman. Produced a son. And that son will stable your home. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. So I, I have some good thoughts. I ain't preaching some other guy's sermon. It's just some thoughts. Amen. But I want to call your attention to verse 18. The birth of Christ was on this wise. Father, we love you. Well, thank you, Lord, for being so good and kind to us. And uh, we ask you to bless tonight's sermon. May it help somebody. Thank you for the folks that are watching by YouTube and getting some help. Lord, I pray that even more get more help in Jesus' name. Amen. So now the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ. Jesus the Christ. Amen, right? Christ Jesus, the birth of Christ was on this wise. Amen? It was on this wise. Number one, it was scriptural. Amen? Hello? It was scriptural. It was a scriptural birth. It was, it, was, it, was, it was following the it was following the scriptures according to the book of Isaiah, right? Isaiah prophesied and said that this birth would come forth, right? Matthew one twenty two says, Now all this was done, it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by who? Of the Lord, by the prophet, the prophet Isaiah, right? He prophesied it. He's the one that texted, said this 750 years before Christ ever came. You know what it is? It's a scriptural birth. Amen. It was promised by the word of God. Listen, over and over and over, it said in the Old Testament, Amen, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Uh, the word of God is this. The words of God say this. You need to obey the book. He came to a nation that wasn't studying their Bible and paying attention to the scriptures. They missed it. Amen. Yeah. They missed his birth. 
And then, then 30 years later, he shows up and they miss his entry coming in and who he was. And they said, Art thou the Christ of John the Baptist? And he said, No, but one coming after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to lose. And he did all kinds of signs and wonders. And they all explained it away. Wound up yelling, have him crucified. They missed it. They missed him. Israel missed it for 2,000 years. Amen. They've had it in the neck and in the hind dead. Amen. His blood be upon us and our children. They've been reaping it. Yep. One of these days, he's coming back. Amen. Amen. After that, he puts it on them in the trip, man. Oh, my. Amen. But it's a scriptural birth. Hello. Amen. Amen. Not only is it scriptural, Amen. I might as well hold my card over here so I don't have to keep looking back. Amen. It's spiritual. It is spiritual. Man, I'm having all kinds of fun trying to spell tonight. What was in that tea you gave me, lady? <laughs> it's a spiritual birth. Amen. It's by the Holy Ghost. Now, if the Holy Ghost is involved in it, don't you think we ought to pay attention to it? Yes. I think we ought to pay attention to it. Amen. Amen. Who's the Holy Ghost? Yeah, but who's the Holy Ghost? Ultimately, who He is? Who is He? Lord, the, Spirit. the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. Whose Spirit is that? Jesus. It's Christ's Spirit. Amen. Amen. But they're all three eternal. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are all eternal. Right? right? But the birth was performed by the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, which brought forth the, the Son of God. Amen? It's spiritual. You know how you got to be born? You were born physically. We understand that. But you know how you got to be born? You got to be born spiritually. You got to be born of the Spirit. Christ is the firstborn of the Spirit. You understand? John chapter number 3 over there. Let's look at John 3. I understand. Listen. I understand some of these guys' complaints. We got so many false bursts out there. It's unbelievable. You understand? Or if we do have some bursts, they're, they're still born at the altar. Amen. Verse 3. Jesus is talking to a religious man. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot be, see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto me, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say unto thee, You must be born again. For the wind, or the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You need born, you've got to have the Holy Ghost involved in your new birth. There's a whole lot of people that's never met the Holy Ghost, never met the Spirit of God. Right. Amen. Listen, your birth has got to be spiritual. Your second birth does. Your first birth is physical. you got to be born of the Spirit. Man, I ain't getting no amens on that. Probably you guys need to get saved. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. you got to be born of the Spirit. Not everybody says, one, two, three, repeat after me. He's going to heaven. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> Bible said there's many that's going to desire that way and not what? Find it. Amen. You know what? It is supernatural. Not just spiritual, but it's supernatural. I'm having fun trying to spell tonight. Supernatural. Oh. There's natural, then there's what? Supernatural. Then there's also what? Unnatural. <laughs> Amen. Listen, supernatural is of God. You know what we need? We need a supernatural move of God in our churches, in our lives, in our home. That's a supernatural book. It's a supernatural experience by a supernatural God. Amen. Listen, we need something more than what just everybody's got. Revival supernatural. We can attempt to have revival. We can pass out literature. We can sing songs. Amen. We can fill and pack out houses. But unless the Spirit of God comes in and does something, amen, that nobody else is God, amen, it's just dead, plain, natural. Right. 
You got to have God light this thing up. Yep. Amen. This kind comes nothing but by prayer and fasting, man. We need heaven to open up and part the power of God to fall. We can't make that happen by just going through the motions. Right. Got to get God in it. Sure. This was a supernatural birth. How? Ow. Impurity. Amen. Pure. Only the pure, all things are pure. Purify ourselves even as He is. Pure. I have a purifying hope. You know what this supernatural thing will do to purify you, to clean your life up? Yep. It's a clean birth. Our natural birth was unclean, impure. Right. right? In sin did my mother conceive me. I mean, I'm impure. I, I got sin. I need cleaned up. He didn't need cleaned up. Amen. It's pure. Mr. Pure came out. Right? right. This birth was of power. Amen. It's by the power of God. <laughs> Supernatural. Amen. How do you take a woman without a man? And have, Hey, listen. All births are a miracle of God. Amen. God's got to give that spark of life. God's got to say, okay, come forth, Nick Adams. Right? He had to give. He had to be there today. The conception happened and say, boom, life. Yep. Yep. Amen. It was ordained by God. But this date was ordained by God. And God planned this thing and wrote it in his book. And it only happened because of his all-time, all-power. Amen. His ultimate power. Amen. The person inside this person. Amen. Supernatural person. Who? Jesus. He's supernatural. Who is he? He's the God-man. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. He's a God-man. Yeah. He had human qualities. He could see. He could hear. He could walk. He could talk. He was a man. But he was God's man. The man Christ Jesus. He had a dual nature. He had a humanity and he had a deity. Right? Now I mean you have a dual nature if you're saved. I got a human nature and I got a spiritual nature down inside there. He come and took his abode in my heart. I got a dual nature. Right? But he's a personified. God personified. God in person. This is called the incarnation where God took flesh. Right? Right. You, ever, you know, you ever seen a ghost? People said they seen ghosts. When Jesus walked on water, they perceived they saw a ghost, right? But you know what they say a ghost is? It's a soul or spirit of a man. And you put a sheet over him, you'd be able to see who he is. This temple right here, this flesh is not the real me. It's just a house that I live in. You understand? And the person that lived inside this body was God manifesting the flesh. Jesus is his humanity. Christ is his deity from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. And the person that was in there, amen, could tell the waters to calm. He could tell the storms to calm. He could tell the waves to be still. He could feed 5,000. He could walk on water, amen. He could perform all kinds of miracles. Amen. He could touch a leper and the leprosy, amen, could be cleansed out of the man, but yet no, no uh, uh, disease was going to attach to him and hurt him. He could open blinded eyes. He could open blinded ears. He could open blinded mouths. He could cast out devils. He could take the cripple and make him whole. He could take the maimed and grow back legs and limbs. Listen, you're talking about God. A supernatural person inside him. Amen. And then what's he offer? He offers a free pardon from sin. Over there in Mark chapter number 2, they said there's only one person that can forgive sins, and that's who? God. God. And Jesus said, I just want to show you that the Son of Man has power to forgive. <laughs> Take up thy bed, <laughs> rise up and walk. Right. And he said, I, he said, go and sin. He forgave their sins. There's only one person who can do that. You have to be supernatural to be able to pardon somebody's sins. The Lord Jesus Christ could pardon sins. Amen. You know what else about this birth? It is sensational. <laughs> Amen. Turn to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. This ain't got nothing to do with his birth, but it's good preaching anyways. Now, I'll take a verse out of context if you don't mind. Give me some liberty, huh? What do you think of that? Verse 41, And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, touched the man, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. This is the leper. 
And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed, and straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away. And he saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. See, they're still under the Old Testament. Right. Verse 45, And he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze it broad the matter. Amen. This guy sensationalized the message that Jesus touched me and changed my life. They blazed abroad the matter. Sensational. Woo! Glory! Cleanse me! I'm free! Hallelujah. Notice what it said. Insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without endeavored places, and it came unto him from every what? Quarter. Now it's talking about every section of town, right? They came from this quarter, like they call it the French Quarter down there in New Orleans. It's a portion of the area of the town. But one guy was out raising money, and he asked everybody to take these little envelopes that had quarters in them. And they'd stuff them full of quarters, and it'd be $5. And a guy came up, and he goes, hey. He said, somebody come to Jesus out of every quarter. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? If every quarter you donated to mission, somebody got saved. Huh? Wouldn't that be a good thing? I understand what it's saying there. I understand how the guy was spiritualizing the text. And he was putting forth good hope. Amen. Every quarter we may give the missions. Maybe somebody gets saved. Hallelujah. Wouldn't that be great? Amen. Amen. But they sensationalized it. You know what they did? They glorified God. They glorified the Son of God. Amen. When he rode into town on the donkey, what were they saying? Hosanna. <laughs> Amen. Hosanna. Amen. Listen, they're glorifying him. Amen. The sensationalized the greatness. You know how great this birth was? This was a great birth, wasn't it? Yes. Huh? The greatest birth, the greatest person, the greatest name, the greatest thing to ever happen. Amen. Amen. Then now all of a sudden, now here's God manifest in the flesh, came down and dwelt among men. And now he's here and the greatness of this thing we ought to praise God for. And then he lived the greatest life that's ever been lived. It's the greatest story that's ever been told. And then the greatest act and the greatest act of kindness ever was, he laid down his life on that cross for you and I. Took our place. And then the greatest event outside of this was his resurrection. He got up from the ground under his own powers, under his own strength. Boy, how great this is. And then say, sensationalize his giving, his giving of his life. Have you ever gave this life to anybody? Who do you tell about this life? All right, you guys didn't say amen, so you put it on me. Acts chapter number 5. Amen. Verse 20, Acts 5, 20. Go, stand, speak in the temple to all the people. The words of what? Isn't that a good, isn't that a good verse? Isn't that a good command? Hey, go out there. And tell all the words of this life. The life of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to talk about something around the water cooler? Why don't you talk about this life? You want to talk to somebody on the phone? How about talking about this life? Because this life's the only life that will change anybody's life. I mean, we can talk about Donald Trump all we want, but he ain't the answer. Christ is the answer. Amen. What about verse 28? Straightly did not we, uh, or did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood <laughs> upon us. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's my intention, to bring that man's blood upon you. Because if that man's blood is brought upon you, you'll be forgiven of all your sin. Amen. Yeah, man, that's what you need. You need his blood. I'm trying to give you a good witness and tell you about him. Amen. The best thing I can do is tell you about Jesus Christ. Amen. I like to sensationalize them. Amen. That's what my uncle's now getting accused of. His preaching buddy used to preach with him. He said, ah, oh, quit grandstanding. It's all you're trying to do is grandstand. Yeah, Jesus is sensational. Amen. He's the greatest. He's the best. Hallelujah. Amen. He'll forgive him all your sin. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> huh? Praise God, I lost my mind. Hello. <laughs> Amen. I better quit that erase that. Hallelujah. 
Last thing I need is a little poodle following me around. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This is not seasonal. Amen. It's all year round. Boy, I didn't get no amens on that either. Amen. 24-7, 365. You ought to be bragging about Jesus Christ and never get over his birth, never get over his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. You know what the devil wants? He wants it kept in the closet until December 25th. He wants to keep the resurrection in the, in, in, in the closet until Easter. And then in limited speaking engagements about it. Amen? Listen, Christians ought to be bragging about this all year long, all the time, thinking about the resurrected Lord and Savior, how he came down to earth for us. Amen! Ought to be preached at all times. Next, can I show you something? The birth of Christ. It is special yes, it is. to me. Is it special to you? Well, I didn't think it's too special to you. You didn't put up a Christmas tree. <laughs> Does that mean the birth of Christ is not special to me? No. Huh? Hey, Hello? Because I didn't kill Rudolph and hang him up my my garage and put his steaks in my refrigerator? Amen. Hello? Special to me. Praise God. Amen. Huh? Amen. I like venison. We'll have some deer chili, I believe. Amen. Some people think my kids missed out. My kids ain't missed nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. God's blessed them and God's blessed me and they get rewarded gratefully, but a lot of people think because you don't do, you don't celebrate December 25th on December 25th. Amen. What's so special about the date? Nothing special about the date, about the person. Who's the person? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. They're out there trying to get my money. That's what they're mad at. That my money's not going to them, but it's going to God's men and God's people and God's work. It's all about Him. Amen. That day's special to me just because I don't have a tree and buy presents with a little fat man. Hey, man, I seen a little Mr. Fat Man today show up, Bob Evans. He comes walking in with a handful of candy canes, taking pictures with people and stuff. I say, Lord, don't let him stop my table. Hey, Amen. I, I don't tell you. I, I was trying to figure out how to do this thing. He skipped us and went to all these tables. I said, thank you, Lord. He just, that was a good thing. Hey, Amen. Hello. I, my mind was going through all that, and I was going to stand up and tell him, say, hey, you know why your suit's red? Hey, everybody, you know why a suit's red? They would have loved that, wouldn't they? I said, this is a counterfeit Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gets his garments in Isaiah 63 stained with the blood of his enemies as he squishes them with grapes at the great wide press of the wrath of God. Boy, boy I, I probably would have got thrown out of Bob Evans at that point. The right Amen. Yeah, but I'm telling you, they don't know why his garments are red. Look at Isaiah 63. He's a counterfeit. Amen. Where does Jesus live right now? In the heart of a believer. He lives in the sides of the north. Isaiah 63. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming back, right? And when he comes back, listen, you got an imposter. The Santa's an imposter. He's a counterfeit. Verse 1, who is this that cometh from Eden? Amen. With dyed garments from Bozra. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in the righteousness, mighty to save, who art thou? Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in what? The wine fat. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of all and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I shall stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. When Jesus Christ comes back, his garments are going to be stained red with the blood of his enemies when he treads the great wine press in Revelation 14. Amen. So how Satan appear? In red. With black boots. 
You know them black boots? And where's he come up and down in? He comes up and down in a chimney, doesn't he? Amen. And what's in the bottom of a chimney? Fire. You know Revelation chapter 1, his feet are as those that were burned in fire. They were fine brass. And that's something. He's got power over creation. This guy twinkles his nose. He goes up and down the chimney. Soot, right? You know anybody who went to hell for you? He's got power over creation. They can come and go at his own power and his own free will. You know who's omnipresent everywhere at the same time? Santa covers the whole world in one night. He knows everybody, whether they're naughty or nice. That's omniscience. That's an attribute of Jesus Christ. Amen. He has all power. He has all power over creation. Right? And when he returns, he brings his rewards, his gifts with him. Santa's coming with a bunch of gifts. Ain't he? And then all the people want to take their children and set them on his lap. And Jesus brought all the little children onto him and he set them on their lap and he touched them. Isn't that something? Yep. That's just a quinky dinky, right? Oh, yeah. Huh? And then he was a son of a carpenter. He worked in a carpenter's house. And there's pictures of Santa. Amen? Being a carpenter. Wonder where they got that from. Wonder how this guy counterfeits everything. Amen. And then they said, Jesus Christ was a gluttonous man. And so how Santa show up? Old big old jolly going, ho, 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 ho. Right? Yeah, his wine bibber is a drum. Hello. Hey, Amen. Listen, there, there's, there's over 40 types of Jesus Christ that Santa portrays. He's, he's a counterfeit, taking all the glory away from Jesus Christ. Hey, Amen. But everybody loves Santa, but they hate Jesus. Hello. Amen. Hey, amen. Hey, amen. He makes his house in the sides of the north. There's a bunch of them out there. Terry Watkins got a good article on it. James Knox got a good article on it. Amen. But it's special to me. Christmas. The Lord Jesus Christ, His birth is special to me. You know what else it says? It says in that passage, He shall be great. Amen. He shall be great. Talking about Jesus Christ. He shall be great. Amen. That's the greatest name that ever was, isn't there? Amen. Not only this earth, but the world, but the world to come. Mm -hmm. It's the greatest name. Amen. He shall be great as a son. Say why? Amen. Because he'll be in submission to the Father. Right? Jesus said, I do that which always pleases the Father. As a son, he was submitted to the Father and did the Father's will. He said, not my will, but what? Thine be done. What an example of submission to do what God said to do. His heart's attitude was, I always do what pleases the Father. Wouldn't that be great if you could do that? Always please your Heavenly Father. Do always what He wants done. Boy, I'd love to do that. Not my will. God, Lord, please don't let me do my will. But boy, every time we get in trouble, sin because we do our will. Sure. That ain't God's will for us to sin, is it? Amen. 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 Uh, Jesus Christ, he was great as a, a Savior. Amen. He's the greatest Savior there ever was, isn't he? Amen. How? By a sacrifice. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All these people that turn around and, and believe they can lose their salvation, they're not trusting in the sacrifice of Christ and what he did and what he paid. Amen. They don't trust and look at his payment. It's his payment. They're making light of his payment. He paid for my sins. Amen. He shall be great as a son. He shall be great as a savior. He'll be great as a shepherd. Yes, amen. Amen. Yep, that's right. Amen. Supervision. Who's your supervisor? Amen. Who's your Lord? <laughs> There's a lot of people who want a Savior, but they don't want a Lord. Yep. And so there's a big argument between the brethren out there. The Lordship of Christ versus Savior versus Lord. Is He your Lord? Well, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thou shalt be saved. Listen, I believe He's my Lord, and I believe He's my Savior, but it may take me a while to get my sorry, rotten will in line with His will. Yep. Amen. Amen. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, who? The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
as a sovereign. I understand that's a Calvinist term. Amen. But he shall be great being a sovereign. I know it makes some Calvinists happy by using that term. Amen. But those Calvinists, they got to exercise your free will to receive them, don't they? Amen. He's a sovereign in supremacy. Amen. He's a supreme being. There's nobody got any more power than he's got. Amen. So how do you know? Matthew chapter number 18 or 28 verse 18. All power given in heaven and earth shall be given unto me. Christ has all power. Amen. He's all powerful. He's the almighty. Yep. Read Revelation chapter 1. Job witness goes, well, he's the mighty God, but he's not the almighty. Do reference on almighty. Get you strong and cords. Do reference on almighty. He is the almighty. Amen. He shall save his people from their sins. Amen. Save people from their sins. You guys believe that? Yep. Amen. Amen. He'll save, he'll save his people from their sins stains. Yeah. You know, you know what, you know what uh, Lester Roloff said. He said he sang a song. Said the blood goes deeper than the stain is gone. <laughs> Help me from sin stains. That talks about the pollution of sin. Amen. Pollution. Sin's pollution. Amen. Yes. It's full of corruption. Amen. Amen. And there's nothing good about sin. I don't care what sin you want to talk about. It defiles. It pollutes. Amen. The tongue set on the world of iniquity. You know what it does? It, it pollutes the air. <laughs> Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. Go buy a water cooler where somebody's just been talking. It feels dirty. Just the air. Why? I mean, listen, you go around some of these places, it just feels dirty. Amen. Dr. Rogman said, you know why I went to Bob Jones University? Because it was a clean, clean place. You want to go somewhere where it's clean. Clean cut people, talk clean, amen, at a clean place. That's what church ought to be. That's what your house ought to be. Amen. amen. It ought to be clean. Yes. Our hearts got cleaned up. We ought to talk clean. We ought not talk dirty and filth. Amen. Save their people from the stains of sin. What about the sting of sin? Amen. Doesn't sin sting? You know what a sting produces? Produces pain. You know, you get out of sin business, you, you, you <laughs> it'll help you solve a lot of pain, a lot of heartache. People have pain in the mind. People have pain in the heart, pain in the flesh. Listen, it'll improve your health if you get out of sin. Yeah. Amen. It'll, produce, it'll, it'll help you. It's, it's penalty. The worst part about sin is the price of it, right? Christ Jesus come to save you from the penalty of sin. Praise God, I ain't going to hell. I can't go to hell. Amen. You talk about liberty, you talk about life. I can't go to hell. Amen. I've been bought and paid for. I can't go. Amen. You said, well, just because you paid for it doesn't mean you got it. When I received him, I got the payment paid in full. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He saved, my, saved me from the strength of sin. What's the strength of sin? The law. The law. <laughs> Amen. The power. I, I've, been, I've been delivered from the power of sin. Right? right? What's he say in Romans 6 over there? Hmm? Romans chapter number 6. Man, if we just believe what we read, he that's dead is freed. Right? Verse 7, he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died once on a sin. Once... But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Does sin reign over you? 
Huh? Does it rain? You got a problem with sin? How come, how come it's got control of you? You shouldn't have it, should it? Verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? <laughs> Listen, God delivered me from sin's power. I still live in this body. I reckon myself indeed dead on the sin, but alive unto God. I yield my members unto Him as those that are raised from the dead. Who chooses to take my feet to the wrong place? Who chooses to let my hands touch something it shouldn't touch? Who chooses to allow my heart to desire something it shouldn't have? Who chooses to allow my mind to go to places it ought not go? Who allows my ears to hear something it shouldn't hear? It ain't God! It means I've given up walking in the Spirit when I yield my ears and my members and my eyes and my nose to things that ought not enjoy. I don't have to sin because I yield to the strength of the flesh. Amen? I'm still in this house. Right? But God's given me power over it if I want to exercise it. He, he separated me from the sentence of sin. What's the sentence? It's the pit. Death and hell be delivered up. And be cast where? In the lake of fire. Amen. He come to save me from that. Amen. I don't have to worry about it. If I'm worried about it, I'm not resting in Him, am I? I'm not believing. I've entered into unbelief and doubt if I get to the place where I lose my faith in Christ. What's the problem? I'm not allowing my heart to fully rest and trust in the finished work of Christ that He paid, to, paid the price. And if the devil can talk me out of that, fear will settle in, right? right? Amen. Listen, if my heart condemned me, God's greater than my heart. Amen. Bottom line is, what do you trust in? The day I reached out and touched Jesus Christ is because he was touching me and asking me to come to him. And I said, yes, I'll take you. And when I took him, he took me. Amen. It was sealed. It was done. Amen. Now I don't have to go to the pit. Somebody tell me I'm going to the pit. Somebody don't know the Bible. That includes my flesh. Hello, my flesh and the devil. The devil talks to my flesh. I don't need some uh, free will Baptist to talk me out of it or some Pentecostal to talk me out of it. All I got to do is just listen to the devil. Amen. It's source. What's the source? Amen. It's the pervert. So who's the pervert? The devil. Amen. <laughs> God delivered me from the pervert. He is the pervert in charge of all the perverts. Who's behind that? Beelzebub. Amen. The Lord of the filth. Amen. Praise God. Who is that? He's the prince and power of the air. Wonder what Michael Jordan had anything to do with that. Huh? His numbers. 23, divide 2 into 3, you get 666. Six, six. Yeah, Amen. He, he played for somebody who had a red-faced ox. Huh. I tell you what, there's a lot connected with that guy and the Prince of Darkness. Amen. His title's Jesus and Christ the Lord and Emmanuel and the Son of the Highest and the Son of God and the Savior and the Lord's Christ. Amen. And the King of the Jews and Wonderful Counselor and the Mighty God and the Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. He's a governor. Amen. He's a bright morning star. Amen. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, I'm glad that I met him and that he could take care of my sins. Amen. There ain't nobody else can do it. The Church of Christ can't wash him away in a tub. Huh? Amen. The apostolics can't give me the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They can't do it. They can't give me Him. Hello? Amen. Baptists can't even give them to you. They can preach about them. The Spirit of God's got to knock on your heart door and show you're lost in need of them and then invite you to come. Right. It's not a Baptist preacher that gives you an invitation to come. It's the Holy Ghost that responds and knocks on your heart, puts you under conviction, says, hey boy, you're going to hell. Hey lady, you're going to hell. You need God. And the Holy Ghost puts you under conviction and troubles you. Amen. I can't remove the trouble once he starts it. And when he troubles sinners, amen, they need to run to God and say, yes, I'll take your son. I'll take his payment. I am guilty as charged. 
Then He gives you the peace. I can't give you the peace. Only He can give you the peace. Only He can cleanse your mind and, and take away the guilt. How does He do that? i got no idea. Right? But it's a wondrous gift of His grace that He'll purge your conscience and purge your heart, fill you with peace and joy in believing. Give you the confidence and assurance that you need. Only He can do that. I can't put you under conviction and I can't take away the guilt. Amen. But I know somebody that can. Amen. And when He troubles you, Amen? Let them just run to them. Amen? We need people to get troubled. <laughs> we need people to get under conviction. We need people to be troubled. I can't do it. People done made this thing too easy. Amen? I believe salvation's easy. One, two, three, repeat after me, but good night. They need old-fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. They need the Spirit of God to do the job. Right. Amen. He'll save. He's mighty to save. Yeah. And then the average person tries to give a person a verse and tries to give them assurance with a verse. I never try to give a person assurance. Right. I don't mind showing them eternal security verses, but I don't try to give them assurance because if the Holy Ghost don't give them assurance, what good's my verse going to do? Amen. Amen. I know a bunch of people, as soon as they lead them in a one, two, three, repeat after me, they take them to First Timothy, or I mean First John 5, 13. Amen. They take them to John 5, 24, and they're trying to give them eternal security. Now the devil's going to cause you to doubt, and you just need these verses. Remember these verses. And you need more than just a verse. You need the inner peace of the Holy Ghost of God. You said, preacher, you're making it too hard. I think people are making it too easy. Yep, that's right. Amen. I believe it's free. I believe it's easy. I believe it's the work of God. I believe the Spirit of God's got to work and do it all. I believe in preaching and allowing God to do it. But the ticket is, did God do it? Right. People at home tonight standing in their pillow with tears and they're not sure. Work it out. Wrestle with God. Get on your face. Open up the book. Pray. So what do you do? You commit to keeping of your soul to Him. Yeah, amen. Lay it out naked before God. Say, God, there it is. God, I deserve to go to hell. I am a hell-bound sinner. And I don't want to go. And God, I just cast it in your hands. And you take care of it. You take hold of it. And I'll trust the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But Nick, would you dismiss us in prayer, please?